Sam, it's a perfect example, but you know these RFPs that ERP selection consultants will send out, and one of the one of the items will say, "Does your system do picking?" <laughs> and you got it's a yes or a no. I was making a joke last time, Andy. I don't know whether you recall this or not, right? When SAP started in the sort of WMS field, they had just one field called BIN, and BIN was a text field, like literally a text field. Growing a business requires a holistic approach that extends beyond sales and marketing. This approach needs alignment among people, processes, and technologies. So if you're a business owner, operations, or finance leader looking to learn growth strategies from your peers and competitors, you're tuned into the right podcast. Welcome to the WBS Podcast, where scalable growth using business systems is our number one priority. Now... Here is your host, Sam Gupta. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of the WBS Podcast. I'm Sam Gupta, your host and principal consultant at the independent ERP and digital transformation consulting firm, Elevate IQ. Running warehouse operations for an enterprise isn't easy. Most people talk about the complexity of SAP, but when you are heavy lifting at that level, you need firepower besides layers of data objects. You get traceability because of these objects, but that also makes implementation extremely challenging. Also, when you are over $1 billion in revenue with warehouse and retail operations, you need to figure out how much you would decouple your architecture. If you have an embedded WMS with an ERP, it might be too bloated to move at the same speed as they process their transactions. This is where SAP EWM shines. In today's episode, we invited a panel of industry experts for a live discussion on LinkedIn to conduct an independent review of SAP EWM capabilities. We covered many grounds, including their unique capabilities with embedded and decentralized architecture for their EWM solution, along with difference between WM and EWM solutions. Finally, we covered several other concepts such as how the solution evolved from a text-based bin field to having over eight layers just for the bin management functionality and a lot more for other business objects. With that, let's get to the conversation. Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's show. And if you're joining for the first time, this is part of our industry series for which we meet every Tuesday at 5.30 p.m. Eastern. And we have a special day and a very special um, solution today, which is SAP EWM. So we are going to have a lot of uh, fun discussing that. Before we do that, we are going to start with everybody's uh, intros. I am going to start with uh, my intro, Sam Gupta, principal uh, at Elevate uh, IQ. Elevate IQ is the independent ERP and digital transformation consulting firm. On that note, I am going to move to Andy. But before that, I am going to wish Happy Independence Day and to everybody, uh, as well as to you, Andy. Now, um, do you want to well, start? Happy in? Canada Long Weekend, Sam. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> My Canadian cohort. Yes. The, the Americans don't realize that we have this thing called July 1st, and it's kind of the same thing as July 4th. Yeah. July 4th, I mean, up in Canada, didn't get didn't get used to get so much publicity, whereas it's starting to evolve into that now. Yeah. Back, you know, years ago, July 4th was huge and Canada was July 1 was barely noticed. But now we're catching up and there's pretty big events on July 1st up here. Yep, I agree. So anyways, well, thank you very much, Sam. And the same to you. My name is Andy Pratico. I uh, have been in the ERP business for manufacturers for all my life, which is a long, long, long time, long, 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 long time. And um I've worked with a number of ERP systems. I've worked with over a thousand manufacturers. I've worked all over in North America. I think about two thirds of the American states and eight tenths of the Canadian provinces I've worked in with different manufacturers of different types of all different kinds. And I also have a published uh, book on uh, it's titled uh, how to select your ERP software without losing your mind or your job. So if you don't want to lose your mind to your job, I'm your man. Thanks a lot, Sam. 
Okay, thank you so much for being here. And Dan, if you are in the audience and joining for the first time, make sure you guys post your questions and comments. We typically try to cover them during the show. Uh, if we run out of time, then Andy will make sure that he's going to send his jokes in mail. <laughs> in the mail. Yeah, well, exactly. The mail. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. And by the way, I mean, see, we have used the word independent here, and today is probably the Independence Day, right? So, you know, <laughs> um, it's kind of funny. So we are probably going to be making a lot of jokes about Independence today, uh, you know. And um, <laughs> go ahead, go hey, ahead. Independence Andy. Day was a great movie. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. And by the way, I mean, see, everybody is trying to be independent from SAT in general because, uh, you know, of sort of this perceived hate towards uh, the complexity of the system. But we are going to talk about the specifics, you know, why SAP EWM, obviously, this is a beautiful solution. There is no question about that. And um, yes, hey, the, SAP, you know, right away, it's world class. Yeah, I know, I know. And, you know, we are going to talk about those specific, uh, you know, details, why it is designed to be complex, and when you are going to be needing complexity of those transactions, uh, you know, and again, it's a different ballgame when you are talking about any organizations that are going to have, let's say, more than a billion dollar in revenue. It's a very, very, very different space. So in general, uh, Andy, let's go back and compare and contrast some of the WMS and TMS solutions that we have uh, reviewed so far. I know we have reviewed a ton now. Would you I'm just not... help the audience and please describe what EWM stands for? Yeah. yeah, so you got me on this one. I think this is called, uh, you know, I think Enterprise Warehouse Management Enterprise. Uh, uh, probably e. Could be, yeah. WM, I, I'm 100% positive. No, 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 sorry. No, 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 that's wrong. No, no, no. This is the extended, uh, you know, warehouse management. Sorry. Yes, uh, that's It's really called extended warehouse management. Yeah. It's not enterprise warehouse management. Uh, and we'll talk about the extended one as well. And I think uh, once we review these slides, then we are going to have the reference of these terms. Uh, you know, so we'll probably catch up to that. But overall, going back to my commentary related to different uh, uh, TMS and WMS systems that we have reviewed so far, uh, um, and it's very hard to keep up now <laughs> because we have reviewed a lot of them. And they are, all are designed for very different industries, very different uh, boundaries of the organization, very different business models as, as well as transactions. So a couple of comparables overall uh, from the WMS and TMS perspective. And when we look at WMS, I guess the comparable here for SAP WMS is probably going to be uh, Manhattan, uh, you know, they are really known for their WMS, but even Blue Yonder, they are not known for their WMS. They are known for their integrated capabilities, WMS plus GMS plus SNOP plus retail planning, the external supply chain. That's how they are known, but they are definitely installed a lot in the, uh, you know, SAP space. Now, we have reviewed uh, some of the players such as Kerber. And we saw that, I mean, they used to be sort of the SAP bar, or uh, I don't know whether they were bar or just the SI Alliance partner, but they used to be in the in the SAP market and they probably are, uh, you know, there today as well. So they are really integrating with SAP and sometimes they might be uh, integrating with SAP EWM because they are going to have a specific capabilities. And uh, most of the time, these companies are trying to use the best of breed solution for each of the vertical slices that they are going to be needing because they are trying to decouple the workload. And when you, you are going to be at that transaction volume level, not only you have to decouple your WMS from ERP, you might have to decouple the other components as well. Yes, that is going to be a nightmare overall from the IT perspective, from the reconciliation perspective, once you are going to be sort of tying in all together, but you need to make sure that your business is going to run. So you are trying to do whatever you can in your power so that business is operating. And after that, you are going to be doing all the competition in the back end. Uh, you know, so that's how typically the architecture is in general in the enterprise space. And that's why, Andy, we are going to see, I think we saw when we reviewed Descartes, uh, Descartes uh, is used in conjunction with SAP as well. <laughs> in fact, Oracle, I mean, they are going to be, um, they will be used more for their data platform, but then uh, the companies are going to be using the uh, their sort of the global compliance and global trade, I, I think it's called GTS, uh, from SAP and, and Oracle perspective. So in that space, one of the things that you are going to notice is you are going to have a lot of different best of breed solutions in general in most installations. 
um, and uh, whether you are going to use uh, you know WMS from uh, SAP or not. Um, sometimes you could use many different vendors, many different solutions in the architecture. Any commentary so far, Andy? Any, any anything to me? No, know? I'm looking forward to it. Okay, perfect. Um, so I'll cover some more aspects that we generally cover for um, these uh, reviews, and that is going to be your internal versus external supply uh, external supply chain, right? Um, so WMS, the way it is designed, it's really designed for the WMS boundaries. So it's not really external. It's going to be really internal. This is going to be your internal supply chain for the most part. This is going to be, you know, when you are going to have many different warehouses, uh, you know, internally, that's when w, uh, SAP WM is going to be friendlier. When you are dealing with your external supply chain outside of the boundary of your systems, that's where you know, SAP may have a little bit of limitations. Uh, SAP does have a different solutions. Uh, EWM is one, obviously, then they have their logistics solution as well. But for the most part, the way SAP is designed, it's not necessarily designed for that external supply chain. And that's where your blue yonders of the world are probably going to be slightly superior uh, in that space just because they have capabilities there. Now, the other things that, uh, you know, we cover as part of this is cloud native versus, uh, you know, on-prem. With most of SAP solutions, you definitely want to be a little careful there because the cloud may not have uh, as deep capabilities as you are going to find in the on-prem space. So that's number uh, sort of two distinction. And then we typically cover the whole package as part of uh, your even supply chain uh, sort of portfolio, right? So we uh, cover the bundle and some of them are going to have your WMS plus TMS plus OMS plus POS combination. Some of them are going to have SNOP combination uh, and it could get very tricky. So in this particular case, you have best of breed WMS solution. They have the logistic solution as well. They are not going to have probably POS, uh, you know, that you are going to find with the other solution. Um, go ahead. Go ahead, Andy. You have a comment, I guess. I was just going to say, you know, it's, it's amazing how much the English language has truncated to being acronyms these days. Yeah, I know. I you know, could almost, I, know. I mean, you know, you talk about the, the, the kids that walk around with their phones and texts instead of phoning people or, or communicating verbally. But now it's even when you communicate verbally, it's all acronyms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, every version of English is probably going to be different, right? It becomes so hard to even follow along, even though people. Uh, it's, like it's, it's, it's like it's a technology dialect. Uh, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. And it's actually becoming worse, Andy. Uh, you know, you might not be able to talk to your Gen Z, to be completely honest, because they are going to feel that we are outdated right now. I know. Uh, <laughs> exactly. I know. Uh, who are these guys? What do they speak? I don't understand them. I don't understand. And besides, uh, they, they're all they're all they're all empowered, and they all uh, believe the world owes them. So good for them. Exactly. Lucky exactly. them. Yeah, each language is going to have so many different versions and, you know, that's um, for sure. And with ERP, I think, you know, that becomes <laughs> we face this all the time, Andy, and you're not going to believe this. OK, even customers, OK, when they are using terms such as your phantom or they are using terms such as release. OK, oh, yeah. completely different things. OK, they both of them are using the same word, but oh, they no. mean different things. And that's what makes, uh, you know, this space very, 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 very challenging. Uh, because and, gonna... and exciting and interesting. I know, I know, I know. But I mean, you really need to know how to read between the lines and, you know, you need to be at the top of your game when it comes to critical reasoning in general. And that's what probably makes the sales cycle difficult as well. And that's what helps, uh, you know, ERP sales people. <laughs> hey, it's all, you know what? It, it's communication skills on another level. That's what yeah. it is. Yep, yep, yep. I agree. I agree. So, okay, Andy, if you don't have anything else, then we'll probably move to the slides now. Yeah, yeah, please. Okay. All right. So here we have some history. And one of the things that you are going to notice, even if you're simply going to Google about any of the SAP products, SAP products have a lot of documentation, great community. You are going to find a lot of videos in general. And that's a real differentiator between your uh, you know, enterprise horizontal centric solutions versus vertical solution, because the community is going to be one of the best. The amount of information that you are going to find, uh, you know, with these products, whether you talk about SAP, Oracle, Microsoft, those three uh, particularly is going to be phenomenal. Um, there are some of the other solutions that can probably match um, this level of information are probably going to be, again, NetSuite, Acumatica, 
uh, just because they are slightly more horizontal solution. The more guarded the company, the more guarded the solution, uh, the less documentation that you are going to find uh, about those solutions. So here, SAP WM is part of uh, SAP AG supply chain management. And since you had asked me to expand uh, on um, EWM, right? So Andy, I don't know whether you know this or not. SAP had two products, okay? Uh, one was WM, and I think it is still there. Uh, and the second is EWM, okay? So WM was warehouse management, slightly different product, and we are going to compare the differences in those two. Extended warehouse management is a very different product. Um, you know, that competes with the likes of your Blue Yonder and Manhattan. It's a very different architecture, and we are going to talk about uh, architectural differences between Oracle and SAP. And again, SAP has very, 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 very different architecture. They have something that other companies are not going to have. In a lot of ways, it's probably going to be slightly more... Uh, in between your info and sort of Oracle, uh, <laughs> um, uh, but we'll 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 see uh, you know where that sort of reside overall in terms of comparison. Um, so here SAP AWM is part of SAP AG supply chain management suite of solutions. Uh, everybody sort of calls supply chain suite, uh, but it could mean a lot of different things. So again, read between the lines in terms of what you are getting as part of the suite. They are going to package different capabilities. In this particular case, you are definitely going to find your WMS, GMS. Uh, SAP has IBP, uh, you know, which is a phenomenal product. Uh, you know, that is your comparable to your any of the SNOP solutions, which competes with your Anaplans of the world, uh, you know, Blue Yonders of the world. So you are definitely going to get that. But again, what you are not going to find uh, in the SAP portfolio, they are not as great, uh, is going to be that external supply chain. That's where you have other solutions in the market. They might be able to do probably better job in that. So here uh, they are talking about SAP WM is similar to SAP WM. And this is where the comparison is sort of kick in, kicking in, Andy. And um, which SAP one WM, was uh, which one's the legacy product? Which one's older than the other? Uh, WM SAP EWM is what they are moving forward with. Uh, uh, I see. Okay. Yeah, SAP WM is definitely being shut down. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So SAP EWM, the I mean, as you can probably imagine with the word extended, the reason why it's called extended is because it offers far more flexibility in business objects like warehouse structured uh, structure picking, put away. <laughs> Handling unit RF and more is what they are saying. Activity areas. Uh, and this is where I think activity-based costing is going to be super handy as well. Uh, not many people understand what that means, but that's a very, very, very deep costing topic in general. Not many uh, products, ERP products support activity, uh, you know, based costing. Uh, that's supposed to be, you know, one of the things that you are going to find inside SAP. And they are big on that. Uh, work center resources, uh, all common. SAP EWM that are new additions. Uh, since SAP WM, SAP WM was company's first foray into a specific uh, warehouse management solutions. By 2025, SAP WM will no longer be supported and completely replaced by SAP WM. And Ooh. sometimes these uh, timelines keep shifting. So, uh, you know, you are, don't have anything to worry there. But you never know. I mean, sometimes when vendors release and if they don't have enough install base, I mean, there is a chance that they might shut down. Yeah, um, it depends on how many people are in love with the old version. Now, even Great Plains or GP is a perfect example, right? Exactly, exactly. I mean, in general, you want to respect the deadlines and want to move out from any products that are legacy. It's not a good thing because it's not going to get as much R&D in general. Uh, Your increased risk. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, yeah, you don't want to be there. And by the way, the development and maintenance cost is going to be higher as well because there are consultants who are literally hanging out in the, those ecosystems because they know that they can, uh, you know, make far more. So there are two ways, and you can make more as the consultant, okay? So these are consulting secrets, okay? Uh, so <laughs> either you want to work on the cutting edge technology <laughs> or you want to work on the most legacy technology, okay? And both pay equally well. Uh, when you are going to be somewhere in the middle, that's where you're not going to make a lot of money. There's, there's another way, too, though, Sam. Yeah. Change the name of the product. And how would you make more money with that? You need well, to everyone thinks you. it must be different. Okay. <laughs> 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 okay. Okay, Andy. Okay. <laughs> All right. Let's move on. All right. Um, <laughs> SAP EWM is a part of SAP supply chain uh, management, supports all the processes within uh, the logistics chain, uh, a precise planning of, uh, okay, so I don't have anything else here. If you have any comment, we can take those. No? No, that's great. Okay. Very interesting. 
So next one. Okay, so here uh, we have some more commentary. And this is really, uh, you know, some of very specific functionality that uh, I don't know how many systems can really support. And we have reviewed a lot of different WMS systems so far. Um, you know, some of them might claim that they might be able to do, but I don't know how deep they are going to be. For example, you have things such as picker to part. Okay, that's a very interesting piece of functionality. Yeah. And this is where it gets really deep into how you are going to be interacting with your conveyor belt or how you are going to be interacting with all of those AMRs, your you know, forklift uh, or whatever AGVs, forklifts, and you need to change your processes because uh, if you don't have processes, the hardware is meaningless. <laughs> so that's where these processes need to be supported by your WMS system, ERP system. And typically, the WMS that you're going to find with your ERP, they are not designed to do all of this, okay? So if you're looking for poor man's WMS where you are simply looking for barcoding, label printing, you know, right. basic scenarios, then you are okay with your ERP embedded WMS, but the intent of that is not to give you best of breed WMS. Uh, if you want that. You know what, Sam, it's a perfect example, but you know these RFPs that ERP selection consultants will send out? And one of the, one of the items will say, does your system do picking? <laughs> and you got, it's a yes or a no. Yes. Anyway, and, and you know I, what I'm talking about. I was making a joke last time, Andy. I don't know whether you recall this or not, right? When SAP started in the sort of WMS field, right? They had just one field called BIN, and BIN was a text field. Can you believe oh, okay. this? Like literally a text field, okay? That you can <laughs> put, in, put a text you on whatever you want. It's, it's a text yeah. field. Okay, how hard could it be to create a text field? Anybody can create that, right? Yeah. yeah. And then SAP obviously grew in their capability, and now... Even BIN itself, the BIN capability is going to be a software in itself. It's probably going to have 100 tables, 200 tables. I don't know, you know, how sophisticated BIN functionality is right now. With oh, yeah. uh, you know, and a lot of system actually caught up. But then you are going to have these baby systems in the quick workspace. Okay. They are all going to say BIN management. And they all have <laughs> and That's it. exactly they where they are right now. Yep. They have just a text field. That's right. <laughs> Doesn't matter. They just say yes or no. Yeah, and by the way, the, the the ironical part that I find in this space, Andy, and I don't know, obviously you have been in this space for a long time, okay, they both are called bin management. I know. I believe this. I know. Okay, and when you are going to take that, and you talk about this one as well, right? When you are taking that checklist approach, okay, bin management, yes, both of them. <laughs> <laughs> well, get, hey, you know what I tell everybody, Sam? The devil is in the detail. Always. 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 Because they both say yes doesn't mean they're saying yes to the same thing. Exactly, exactly, exactly. So true, so true. All right, so let's move on. So here, uh, you know, we have some of the functionality. Picker to part, which is very detailed, very involved functionality that you are going to find probably only in your best of breed WMS systems. What's the difference between picker to part and part to picker? Uh, exactly. And that's the description that we have. So we are going to cover that. Uh, you know, so we have four different processes here. One is picker to part, part to picker, sorting system, picker pick to box. Okay. So picker to part uh, is this one. So here they are saying the process involves a storage area. Okay. A storage okay. area, a picking area, a material handling system. Material handling system is going to be something like your conveyor, right? That refills the packing locations from the storage area. Uh, sorry, picking locations from the storage area, right? So basically, you are you had something in the storage area. You are trying to, I mean, again, you are trying to automate your physical process. That's what you are trying to do, and you are not using manual labor. You are using a conveyor to do that. And you know, one of these steps is going to be picker to part, where you are moving from your storage area to your picking area. That's what you are doing here. The handling system can be forklift, uh, forklift based or more specialized, such as your gravity flow racks okay the picking operators get the items to fulfill each customer order from the picking area since the items are in the smaller area than the general storage area so general storage area is going to be your bigger warehouse and then you are sort of trying to bring it to a smaller area where you can move efficiently that's what you are doing so you are doing picker to part right so just, uh, just imagine how sophisticated and how large organizations are that require this level of detail Exactly, exactly. But I mean, look, wow. I mean, if you are going to be distribution organization and you'll be shocked, okay, even like super small distributors are probably going to be really, uh, eh? yeah, 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 because I mean, they all have in 
sometimes, I mean, I, I'm actually shocked, okay? So they are going to have fancy ASRS system, okay? Mm-hmm. Because they understand the belly, because it's hardware. They can see it, okay? And they are going to have really poor ERP system. In fact, they are not going to have an ERP system. They are going to feel that they have an ERP system. <laughs> okay, can you believe this? Okay, because ASRS system, when you look at the ASRS picking, sorting system, I mean, you see tangible value with those systems in your warehouse. Everybody can see it. You mm-hmm. don't have to hire as many warehouse workers. Okay, the system is doing everything, and that's why companies, you know, and by the way, I mean, it's a great sales pitch. Okay, when your customers are going to walk in your warehouse, <laughs> It looks fancy, okay? Oh, well, yeah, but so, you know, I'm just thinking about there's so many transactions here. This must be all MES, like integrated into the these uh, uh, forklifts and and conveyor belts and automatically updating. Well, so that could mean a lot of things. So number one, I think you had MES there. So this is not really MES, right? So this is really happening inside the warehouse, right? Mm-hmm. Uh it is providing some level of automation, but don't feel that, you know, it's completely automated the way they okay. are going to show in movies, you know, sci-fi movies where, you know, you have computers sending the instruction. You said that's not what is happening here, okay? Even accomplishing, this is a big deal, okay? So this is a very siloed experience, but even this... Well, I want I want to see sci-fi stuff, Sam. <laughs> sci-fi. That's not happening right now, Andy, okay? So we... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Chat GPT need to teach us before we get there, I guess, you know. Well, that's what Jen, that, hey, that's what we're talking about, right? They're all over that, and we're, yeah. we don't even know what that language is, right? Yeah, yeah. So let's talk about this one first, okay? So so let's let's finish off, okay? So picker to part we were talking about. So yeah. here we have some understanding of what picker to part is. Uh, since the items are in a smaller area than the general storage area, that we have already covered that. Uh, there are a number of technological advances in, in picker to part processes, including pick to light and voice picking systems. Pick to light systems informs picking operators of which product to pick by shining a light on it. Okay, so you can go crazy with your sci-fi uh, ambitions <laughs> in terms of what all you can do inside the warehouse and warehouses where, uh, you know, companies do like to spend a little bit of money, uh, you know, because they see a real value in this. Now, when you look at the picker, part to picker, so you ask this question, Andy, right? So what is the difference between picker to part and part to picker? So it's the exact opposite pr- process. What you are doing uh, as part of your uh, picker to part, you are doing the opposite thing in this case, okay? So here they are saying the difference is that the picking area for this method is made up of a series of picking bays. So the part to picker method uses the same elements as the uh, picker to part method, storage area, picking area, a material handling system. Products are moved from the storage area and then delivered to the picking base. Uh, Each bay receives the items for one or more orders. The picking operator then collects the products after they are delivered to their way and fulfills the customer orders. So I'm not sure if it is exact opposite. I think in this particular case, you have the base. In the other one, you have, uh, you know, it is directly going to your smaller area, I guess. So that's where the real... The picking bay is probably like a staging location or something like that, eh? So I think you are creating different lanes. Uh, You know, sometimes you create the lanes inside warehouse because you have to sort them by the category. Um, so that's my understanding um, of this one. Yeah, and then you have the sorting system, right? So sorting system methods uses method uses an automatic uh, material handling system, and this is the automated sorting uh, consisting of multiple conveyors and a number of sorting uh, devices. Then you have pick to box as well. Pick to box method is similar to sorting system because it uses the same elements: the a picking area, storage area, replenishment of the uh, picking area, and a sorter. The picking area is organized so that there are a number of picking zones connected by a conveyor system. The operator fills the box with the item on a customer order, and then the box, so in this particular case, this is a box that is actually moving to the shipping conveyor, and then you know that's probably going to be our uh, UPS or whatever, so you are trying to automate the whole shipping process. The box moves to the picking zones until the customer order is complete and then ready for shipment to the customer. So again, there is a lot of automation happening here. So that would be similar to license plating, maybe? No, 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 no. Not no, even no, close. Okay. No. no. So here, 
basically, you know, what they are doing is they are automating these steps between your, the way your packing is done. So traditionally packing was done. Okay. You had a little, uh, you know, picking area guys will go, they'll get the stuff, put it in one area. Then other guy will start and they will sort of pack, uh, you know, based on the order. And then you have the third station where they are probably going to be printing label. And sometimes they could be clubbed and combined in terms of how they are going to ship, right? So that's the manual sort of way of operating inside warehouse. Now you can introduce the conveyors in between these processes. So as soon as you are going to pick, now you are going to put that in the conveyor as opposed to giving it to a guy next is standing next to you so now this conveyor is going to go and they need to scan they need to sort of put the label on that uh, you know sometimes the whole labeling machine can be automated as well okay so it's it's that crazy and then you know it's it's going to go and going to move to your shipping area where you are simply loading the truck right so the whole physical process is automated as well it's not just the digital process uh, you know we are talking about uh, in these scenarios so there are Again, you can go crazy. And that's why SAP has so much complexity. Uh, you know, when you want to implement all of these, then you need that complexity because if your data is not going to support all of those automation scenarios, it could be very difficult to implement these. And even if you gain the benefits from the automation, you are probably going to be spending a lot of more time later on in reconciling your inventory. And that's where SAP sort of balances these two. Uh, yes, it's going to be very difficult in general in terms of the usage uh, as well as implementation, but you are getting a lot more value because the reconciliation is not going to be as hard as well as your automation is, is probably going to be learning is going to be hard. Once you get it, then it's easier. OK, so if you don't have anything else, uh, we'll move to the next one. So here. So we are talking about the whole evolution, how it is uh, evolved. So here they are uh, talking about stock was managed at only a storage location level with IM component and without any warehouse management component. And you are going to see history. And some of these systems in 2023 and the, they are probably going to be at this stage right now where SAP was 30 years back. Right. <laughs> okay, it grew because companies needed that functionality. Okay, so yes, it is complex, but companies needed that. Uh, that's why SAP had to build, uh, you know, all of this functionality, you know, then you have the facility to enter bin number as a text. Uh, I, uh, you know, I think I spoke this a couple of times, uh, you know, in the material must master. That's how lean the warehouse management functionality was where it was just a text field. And then they now, you know, it's probably going to have, you know, uh, 200 screens uh, just as part of this functionality. Uh, now, later, SAP introduced lean warehouse management concept where bin number was still maintained in material master as a text. Can you believe this? Okay. And but uh, the system could create picking tasks in confirmation of picking tasks to update picked quantity. And this, this was just a hack because obviously they didn't have the functionality. And it could be a hack today in a lot of systems because they just don't have that capability. Only their marketing material has that capability. <laughs> You talk in Gen Z language too. <laughs> what is it? I know, I know, I know. <laughs> I know. Okay, so let's move on here. So PPQM, and these are all, uh, you know, SAP terms, obviously. Um, ERP, you know what PP stands for? QM yeah, yeah. So that's uh, production HR, planning, but... quality management. Uh, HR is. What's your, HU? Well, HR is uh, handling HR. unit. What is it? HR handling unit. Handling oh, unit. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. I believe you have HU in your in four LN as well. Uh, they call well. It's probably yeah. Okay. It's yeah. like a combination of the unit of measure and uh, no, 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 no. So HU is going to be slightly bigger than license plate. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so uh, some systems are going to pretend that they have HUs, but they probably are going to implement that using license plate because yeah. they could be interchangeable. But handling unit a lot has a lot more robust functionality in general okay so the way handling units are supposed to work they are supposed to represent every single handling unit that you have as part of your supply chain including your trucks okay including your you know anything that is happening and by the way i mean we are not even talking about external supply chain right now we are simply talking about okay sap's boundary sap ewm boundary is going to be in that when you have 20 different warehouses and you are simply moving goods from one place to the next. Um, you are moving this from your bigger truck to your smaller truck to your again sort of consolidating. So okay. all of that inventory needs to be tracked. 
and when you go from one handling unit to the next you know all of those handling units need to be part of the system you are not going to find a business object called truck inside sap you know they are to be <laughs> represented as handling unit in general okay. license plate slightly smaller i mean see if you are going to use handling unit as license plate to over bloated it's not supposed to do all of that license plate is supposed to be baby functionality and big unit is slightly bigger yeah license plate is usually a pallet of something uh, exactly 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 uh you know inside the warehouse uh you know i would use that <laughs> a yeah. pallet of multiple things exactly exactly i mean uh, if you are asking anybody they might be confused i guess you know because even handling unit they might claim that you know it's it does the same thing so what's the difference uh but again well, yeah it's but it's the same thing is saying that two systems both have been locations and exactly two means the same thing which it doesn't exactly 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 could not agree more but the very last sentence it says that extended warehouse management is in sap s4 hot or is it an optional module so we are going to talk about that as well that's a very interesting comment and 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 we need to discuss different configuration options that you are going to have um so there are two configuration options and they all have their pros and cons and you know based on your architectural needs as well as business model both mm. of them could be equally uh, you know handy and that's where the comparison between your oracle microsoft and sap is going to be so we'll discuss that so let's talk about erp wm solution uh, with trm functionality is added uh, decentralized and this is where so andy the comment that you just made is going to be related to your decentralized extended uh, warehouse management as part of the supply chain management integration with sap erp is needed for data transfer so centralized versus decentralized we are going to uh, discuss the difference between those two architecture you know how I they see. work okay. yeah so here we are talking about the difference between wm and embedded wm so embedded wm and by the way i don't think we are talking about decentralized ewm just yet we have a little commentary here with respect to decentralized ewm that's a different functionality so here wm the best way to think about this is going to be it's going to be very similar wm functionality that you are going to find with today acumatic and suite probably sure. you know yeah microsoft business central and to some extent microsoft as fno as well so wm where house number is three characters okay there are a bunch of limitations there sap always had these limitations for some reason but again you know they are not a big deal in general depending upon how your coding scheme is uh, you know of skews where house storage uh, so the main difference between your wm and embedded wm is going to be the business model that uh, both of them can support uh, okay so some of the comments that you might want to pay attention to is handling unit is probably one of the differentiator that you are going to find in both of them and i think we saw in the previous slide that handling unit functionality you are going to find in ewm you are not going to find in any or wm uh their marketing material might say that they both have and sometimes <laughs> even products from the same vendor you know maybe competing with each other you never know uh well, you different know. marketing people use it for each product and they're sort of competing against each other right 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 uh so you know marketing is always tricky mm -hmm. um to work with but i mean your handling unit is not going to be there in your wm so defining max number of bins in the storage type ensures that the single product does not overfill the storage type that's not as meaningful okay so here is the comment that is that came from one of the forums i guess that we picked okay so they are, have asked the question can we have embedded ewm run 24 cross 7 while the core as for hana is down for maintenance their warehouse operations should be up and running 24 cross 7 okay so this is where the whole 24 cross scenario is very critical when you talk about e-commerce operations okay when you talk about your warehouse operations okay in general okay erp is going to take longer okay because it's trying to do a lot okay the transactional consistency that you are going to have inside your erp it's going to take forever for that maintenance upgrade now don't ask me why e-commerce systems are faster and why facebook is faster you know these are fundamental database concept then i don't have time today to explain hopefully one of these days okay but <laughs> <laughs> but any systems that are going to be really really deep into databases okay they are probably going to take long time for that maintenance and upgrade cycle and this is where decoupling is going to be handy so when you have 24 cross 7 operations okay even with your warehouse okay and you want your warehouses to be running all the time you have 24 cross 7 uh, you know operations you cannot afford to go down that's where your extended 
the whole extended concept is because of that okay not only because of that okay you sometimes your warehouse architecture needs to be very different from your erp okay it's not always going to be one to one okay and that's where your microsoft oracles of the world are going to probably fall short because if you have embedded uh, you know uh, ewm then you are sort of coupling your erp with your uh, wms architecture and not every business model can afford to have that but, but your note here says Microsoft and Oracle equals embedded TMS. Right. So when I say embedded, meaning they are coupled as part of the code. Okay. Right. They are not, uh, you know. But both TMS kind of... is different than to warehouse management. Right, right, right. So I'm talking about both of those things. Sorry, I think you have a great Combined. point there. Andy. Okay, yeah, gotcha. WMS and TMS. Sorry, I mean, that's probably a mistake, right? But yeah, the way Oracle and Microsoft, they are designed, they are not designed for your billion-dollar organization when you are going to okay. go to that billion dollar organization, you have to decouple your processes. Uh, it could be business model issue because you are trying to run 24 cross seven, or you might have $20 transactions and they could, they could be billions and billions of uh, you know of transactions. And sometimes you don't care for costing and scheduling in those transactions. Your goal is to move as fast as possible. And your goal is going to be that, then you probably need your decentralized architecture, but designing that architecture is very critical. It's, it's, it's difficult, it's challenging, it's not as easy. OK, but SAP can support all of that. And that's where, you know, Manhattan and Blue Under, they support decentralized architecture. And that's why companies like right. them, because, you know, they are not going to care for what your ERP does. Doesn't you know, matter they, what ERP, yeah. well, it doesn't matter. Usually it doesn't matter which ERP they have. Uh, even if you can send the summarized entry for retail operations, they are probably going to be OK. You know, right. they are more worried about that e-commerce, you know, warehouse operations. That's where their, you know, money is. Um, so here, SAP can support both. I mean, that's where the real... Uh, differentiator is with SAP. So decentralized EWM versus SAP S4 HANA EWM. So here, so SAP can support both. SAP can do embedded. SAP can also do decentralized. But the architecture has to be different the way they are going to work. You know, it does increase the implementation time. It increases um, your training time the way it's going to work. Uh, but it can support both of those architecture. So here they are saying multiple ERP systems are required. And yes, this is the architectural decision in some cases, even though SAP can host everything, okay, as part of your business inside one ERP, sometimes you might need to have multiple ERPs. Okay, again, that is your IT performance decision that you have to make depending upon your transaction volume. It's not always, you know, these things are not always as easy that I'm going to have all of, of my transactions in one ERP versus your WMS. So again, you have to analyze how your transactions are laid out, you know, where you have the maximum amount of transaction, what kind of transaction uh, processing capacity that you're looking for from the architecture. And based on that, you need to decide what architecture is going to be the right fit for you. So that's where, I mean, see, sometimes you're going to have multiple ERP system. That's a design choice. That's a business model choice. Okay, third party manages warehouse activities. Again, if you have 3PL as part of your business operations, you probably need to have this, okay? You need to have it decentralized because 3PL is a very different business model, okay? And even if you're working with 3PL where you require the traceability, then you probably want this, okay? Um, the larger warehouses and high performance. Performance is probably a keyword that you may want to pick on. So when you require that high transaction, high volume, high performance, that's where your decentralized uh, architecture is probably going to be really handy. Okay, comments, Andy? No, it just it just just goes to show you, you know, when they, people have to use the term ERP and they assume they're all similar, and the fact is they're not even close. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Could not agree more. So if you don't have any other comments, let's move on. So here, uh, SAP WM has been installed in what 2,800 customers, which does not sound, uh, you know, very high, but again. And you look at the size of those customers. They're huge. <laughs> okay, it's almost a miracle, you know, what SAP is able to do. Uh, you know, 24 industries and, and 44 countries. Uh, then uh, you have the major new capabilities are delivered for advanced labor planning, uh, labor activity tracking based on shift data, travel distances, labor standards, time and attendance, and reporting activities. Again, these are slightly more warehouse centric uh, labor management which is very, 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 very different from the labor that you are going to manage inside your ERP. Um, the KPIs are very different the way, and again, if you are a distribution organization, you probably want to have this inside your WMS system. Customer orders in a more efficient way with a pick cart and easy to use. I don't really have anything here. Pallet planning is a better way to organize the package building based on the algorithm from transportation management. So they are talking about warehouse optimization here. Stock consolidation makes it possible. 
to merge partial quantities into complete ones so that more warehouse space can be freed. And again, these are different concepts. I mean, it goes really, really, really deep. Really deep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So some more comments here, like picking, posting, and managing storage bins and goods receipt. That's not very meaningful. Can set alert for changed data before goods received from your EWM to your ERP system. There is a little notification going on. And sometimes those those notifications may be required just because you need to sort of make the space inside your warehouse. There could be so many different factors why you would require that. And again, when you are dealing at that volume, your needs are going to be very different in general. This is a very similar functionality as your ASN. And the reason why ASN exists is because, again, you are trying to prep the warehouse because even if you're going to lose a minute in warehouse, that could be a million dollar, um, you know, at times, depending upon how much volume you have inside the warehouse. Correction of goods received from EWM to ERP system and inbound delivery split from EWM to the ERP system, deconsolidation of handling units and deconsolidation is going to be all of those scenarios, Andy, where you are loading, unloading these trucks, you are doing cross-talking. It gets very, very, very deep, even inside cross-talking, which contain different products before putting them away in different storage locations. Uh, slotting, again, very, very, very deep topic. And if you want to get your slotting right, you need to do a lot of work. And that's what people hate. Okay, They hate doing the upfront work that is required uh, to run a system like SAP. But again, if you need the power, you need to put a lot of work. Okay, tasks like work packages uh, consisting of warehouse tasks, warehouse employees. And again, these are series of activities that you are passing very, very unique to SAP. I think we saw that in the case of, uh, if I remember Kerber, uh, Kerber also had sort of the group of tasks that you can sort of move along, um, you know, and you can create these series of rules. Um, So that was very interesting uh, in that as well. Manage and track vehicles as as well as other transportation units. So you are managing all of those transportation units. Sometimes these could be forklifts, sometimes they could be inside your yard, uh, you know, sometimes they could be outside. So you are tracking inventory everywhere and that's your goal. Uh, you know, you don't want to sort of consolidate the inventory uh, view, uh, you know, when it is going to be sitting in different places. Okay, check and check out functionality is very interesting as well. Again, that could be very difficult. Uh, to use and implement and people don't like and that's why they are probably going to use a best of breed uh, you know yard management system okay i don't have anything else here if you uh, have any comment and i can take that or move to the oh, next one good okay so this is your decentralized sort of architecture uh you know it's going to be very different in general so here we are talking about sap figure one is sap wm on SCM server, which is your supply chain management. And then you have this one as a standalone, depending upon your upgrade cycle, depending upon how you want to sort of bring up, bring down, um, you know, all of those factors uh, you need to keep in mind before designing this architecture. Again, this is a very on-prem view, but even in, in the case of cloud, if you want that flexibility, then you have to make a decision whether you are going to use the embedded version or you are going to use the decentralized version. The way the transactional boundaries are going to be, so here inside ERP system, you have the sales order, you have the outbound delivery, and that's at the scope of ERP is done. Most of the system inside, you know, if you look at other ERP systems, the only thing they are going to do is they are simply going to create a shipment and that's it. Their role is done, okay? They don't even create outbound delivery. Outbound delivery is a very different business object, okay? So here you are creating outbound delivery, but then you are going to have a little bit of duplication here in terms of business object. So in your SCM system, in your warehouse system, and even if you're using external warehouse management system, you probably need to have this duplication, okay? So here you are going to create outbound delivery. That outbound delivery order is going to come here, and that's going to be start of the process for this warehouse management system that is taking instructions from your ERP ERP system. So here you are creating outbound delivery as well. This is actually your delivery, okay? Delivery is not happening inside your ERP system. So now uh, you have some more views here, overall in terms of master data. So in terms of master data, also there is gonna be a little bit of duplication. So inside ERP, you have customer vendor plant shipping point, but you don't have location, okay? ERP does not know about location. So you're not gonna get any sort of reporting related to location. For that, you need to go to your WM. And this is where some uh, you know people argue that you know what location should not be there inside your ERP system. But even ERP sometimes may have locations depending upon your reporting, depending upon your traceability needs. <laughs> okay, so I don't have anything else here. Any comment, Andy? No. Okay. So let's keep rolling then. Okay, so some of the things that, uh, and this is coming from another screenshot that we had taken, and this is the contract logistics, and we have seen contract logistics used in 
with many different systems, right? Trimble, uh, you know, they did a lot in the freight forwarding space. So here we are talking about the cooperation with logistics service providers, and this functionality itself is a big deal. You know, typically the process is going to be broken when you are working with your 3PL, when you are going to be requiring that lot traceability, you know, because this is a third party warehouse. So how do you sort of do the handshake? Um, you know, when you are going to have lot numbers, but then are they sending you lot numbers? So it becomes very confusing when you are dealing with 3PL, especially if you are going to have lot numbers involved. But here, these guys are going to have that functionality where stocks are monitored, supplier relationships are integrated, cooperation with parcel services and freight forwarders is efficiently. And again, efficiently could mean a lot of different things, but they can do a lot. <laughs> the shuttles and control conveyors, material flow in shuttles and conveyors are controlled optimized and monitored with SAP EWM, SAP EWM monitors equipment availability and performance and uh, manages maintenance process. And this is where if you want to automate your warehouse, if you want to get into that whole industry 4.0 space, you have to get your ERP and WMS architecture right. Then you have things such as your value added services, which is very, very, very different that you are going to find only in the contract logistics space because even though they are sort of moving goods, but they are really the service centric organization. They are the way their contracts are going to be is very different, right? So again, SAP can support all of that as well. It's the minutia detail. Yes, it is. It is. It is. But these are the differences between your WM and EWM. EWM can do a lot. You can do value added services. You can do opportunistic cross docking is another one. I mean, that's very, very, very deep. So um, the big difference between tier one and tier two. Yeah. ERPs yeah. as well. Exactly, exactly, <clears throat> exactly. So let's keep moving here. So this is uh, sort of the evolution of EWM. And again, they have come a long way overall in terms of the functionality. Uh, you know, some of the newer systems that you are going to see, they are probably going to be somewhere here where SAP was in 1970. <laughs> but obviously it grew and it has a lot uh, more advanced functionality. But you are going to find, uh, you know, features that such as your graphical warehouse layout, you are going to find slotting, you know, that's not a big deal. But again, level of depth and level of layers that you are looking at would, in each of Can you describe what slotting means, please, Sam? So typically that's going to be, okay, when you have a product that you are finding at a very specific location, okay? So you have the bin, but then, you know, slotting is going to be probably uh, really sort of constraining that, okay, if you have a product that you need to find in that spot, then you are going to have a lot of constraints in terms of, so the more uh, you are going to be doing slotting, the easier it is going to be find for the people who are picking because one product can only stay in that particular slot. You cannot you know, put it away anywhere. And this is probably the problem when you are going to be looking at, let's say, other warehouse system. People say that, you know what, I have my physical process, but you know people keep moving things around. So my system and physical processes, they are going to be completely different. So this is where you know if you are going to be implementing slotting, it can prevent a lot of that because system will not allow you to move things, uh, you know, because they might not belong to that particular location. So you are literally, you know, sort of uh, creating that correlation between your product and the location. Rearrangement, scale integration, obviously that's a big deal. Stock specific UOM is 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 a big one. So again, they have they have they have done a lot. Uh, you know, if you look at the advanced uh, functionality, they have a lot there. I don't have anything. Proof of delivery is a big one. You know, sometimes people struggle to understand whether it should reside inside ERP or not. Uh, this is really your TMS functionality as well as WMS functionality where it should belong to. And that's why you are seeing it here. Again, uh, if you look at overall screen layout, I mean, some of these things, I mean, they are very, very, very detailed. And, you know, when you look at things like tear weight, so maximum, tear weight that's the tear. And again, I don't think we have time today to cover that. Yeah, but that's going to be, I mean, your uh, sort of the pellet weight, right? I mean, and that's going to be really into that food and beverage space where, and again, now we are getting into the, the depth of the warehouse management, uh, you know, capability. And not uh, most of the mid market systems are probably not going to have all of this. Okay. Yeah, I, I've uh, never heard that expression before. Yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, and again, look at the uh, just inside the bin. I mean, the number of layers that you are going to find: storage type, storage bin, faction, bin type, aisle, stack, level. Bin section, bin dash, just bin, okay? And this used to be a text field. Can you believe this? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so just one comment here. We have uh, one coming from uh, 2020 here. Uh, the Fury is a great advancement overall from the UX perspective. Um, you know, that has streamlined a lot of things. Uh, then they are saying implementation requires effort. That's given, okay? When you are implementing an enterprise level system, you have to put effort. Uh, you, you have to invest a lot in the consulting effort. Uh, you know, otherwise you are going to struggle. Don't buy this if you don't have 
money to spend on consulting, especially integration with SAP ERP for master data is tricky. Obviously, it is tricky. It's not supposed to be easy. SAP should provide better and more. SAP is not going to provide all of that, okay? <laughs> because it's too complex. You need consultants uh, who really understand what they are doing. The limitations or benefits of uh, embedded EWM solutions need to be listed out uh, in more details. For Currently, there seem to be only one SAP note. Okay, again, you need consultants. A lot of features are now available within the same... Okay, that's not very meaningful. So, Andy, I think that's pretty much it. Or maybe I have one more. Uh, do I have anything here? This very similar, you know, complaint that obviously it is difficult, but I'm not seeing anything meaningful. So, it's, yeah, I mean, the more sophisticated anything gets, the more difficult it's going to be to utilize, learn, and implement. Exactly. Exactly. You got, to, you got to decide whether you need that level of sophistication. And if you do, tough beans, learn it. Yeah. Yeah. Any more comments, Andy? No, that's great. Very yeah, yeah, and um, again, if you are planning to buy something like SAP, make sure you have you keep a lot of money for the implementation and consulting because you might feel that you sort of know that's what everybody does in the ERP space, but trust me, you don't know. Nobody knows, not even consultants. <laughs> uh, no, you know, and they're not cheap. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, you know, you are paying money for a reason because obviously they have spent a lot of time. Um, you know, with these things and they are upgrading their capabilities on a daily basis. But, you know, if you don't set up it right, I mean, you are not going to get results. So what's the point of buying? <laughs> I've never heard of an SAP implementation coming in under budget. Um, exactly. But I mean, SAP is not to blame for that. Uh, you know, Andy, completely honest. I mean, there are a lot of different variables. Uh, no question. In, with that. But in general, SAP is a massive system. And if you are looking for SAP-like capabilities, you have to have the consulting dollars. <laughs> you have to spend the money. Yeah, for change management, for, for consulting, for everything. Yeah, yeah. Any other comments, Andy, before we wrap? Oh, that's great. Thanks, Sam. Awesome. So that's it for today, guys. If you joined for the first time, this was part of our uh, industry series for which we meet every Tuesday at 5.30 p.m. Eastern. So make sure you guys are going to be here uh, next week. We are going to come back with another vendor or the solution. On that note, thanks, everyone for tuning in tonight. Thank you very much, everybody. Have a great July 4th. I cannot thank our guests enough for coming on the show, for sharing their knowledge and journey. I always pick up learnings from our guests, and hopefully you learned something new today. If you want to learn more about ND Practical, head over to esoft.com. It's esoft.com. Links and more information will also be available in the show notes. Also, don't forget to subscribe and spread the word among folks with similar backgrounds. If you have any questions or comments about the show, please review and rate us on your favorite podcasting platform or DM me on any social channels. I'll try my best to respond personally and make sure you get help. Thank you, and I hope to get you on the next episode of the WBS Podcast. Thank you for listening to another episode of the WBS Podcast. Be sure to subscribe on your favorite podcasting platform so you never miss an episode. For more information on growth strategies for SMBs using ERP and digital transformation, check out our community at wbs.rocks. We'll see you next time.